This is Tom Quantex Port and today we are, are testing Intel's fairly recent i5-10400 against the close to a year old AMD R5-3600 to find out which one you should get for gaming. As stated, this video will focus on gaming performance in a variety of games. So the Intel i5-10400 is a 6-core CPU with 12 threads that is locked, meaning you cannot overclock it. I paired it with a Gigabyte Aorus C490 Elite AC, which may seem weird, but I wanted the ability to overclock the memory to see how much of a difference it makes, if any. Uh, and I'll probably put in another CPU eventually. I tested with the memory at 2666 MHz CL15 and then tested with the highest speed I was able to achieve with the Corsair Dominators, which was 4266 MHz CL16. I will be comparing it with the Ryzen R5 at its stock settings with 3200 MHz memory, which it has native support for, uh, and then with PBO and Auto OC with 3733 MHz memory CL15, uh, one to one with the fabric speed. I also include the results for the i5-6600K at 4.8 GHz and you will find more detailed system specs in the description. I wanted the CPUs to perform at their best, therefore I did not test the stock cooler. It's not a very good cooler, it's probably on par with or a bit worse than the rate stealth that comes with the R5-3600. Instead I went overboard with the Corsair H115i at 280mm AO which should enable the CPUs to perform at their best. The Intel i5-10400 has a base frequency of 2.9GHz and a single thread boost of 4.3GHz, while the all-core boost speed is 4GHz. The Ryzen CPU tries to do 4.2 on all cores, but when all cores are used, the actual clock speeds are between 4 and 4.1GHz. With PBO and AutoLC, the Ryzen is able to boost individual cores up to 4.4GHz, but the all-core speeds are pretty much unchanged. The GPU used for testing is the Aorus 5700 XT with the 20.5.1 drivers. So let's see how they perform. Starting off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p with medium settings, the i5-10400 with standard 2666MHz memory has very respectable performance, coming in at 137.6 frames per second on average, with good frame time staying well above, oh, well, staying above 60 frames per second. The Ryzen R5-600 with 3200MHz memory managed 129.8 frames per second, with 0.1% load dipping just under 60 frames per second on average. This puts the 10400 with the 2666MHz memory 7% ahead of the R5-600. Boosting the memory speed to 3733MHz brings the Ryzen R5-600 just in front of the i5 at 140 frames per second on average, with much improved frame times. If you pair the 10400 with 4266 MHz memory, it gets a performance boost by 17% to 161.2 frames per second on average, bringing it 15% ahead of the Ryzen CPU with the 3733 MHz memory. The 4 core i5 is lagging way behind here and it has pretty bad frame times. Moving to 1440p medium, and here we run into a GPU bottleneck, making all CPUs perform about the same, apart from the frame times on the 4-core i5, so uh, let's just move on to the next game. Rainbow Six Siege is next, and at 1080p with ultra settings, at 50% render scaling, the i5-10400 with the 2666MHz memory managed 283 frames per second on average, and that makes it perform about on par with the r 5 with the 3200MHz memory. With 4266MHz memory, the i5-10400 gets a 7% performance bump, but the r 5 600 with fast memory is edging it out here, and the 4-core i5 is lagging behind again, but it, ha but it does has very playable performance. At 1440p, we yet again run into a GPU bottleneck, making all the CPUs perform about the same, apart from the 4-core i5, which is slightly slower, but still very playable. The Witcher 3 is up next and at 1080p with the 10400 with the native memory did 93.4 frames per second average, which is essentially the same as the 3600 with its native memory. Uh, if we pair both with fast memory, that brings the 10400 5% ahead of the 3600, while the 4 core i5 is lagging a bit behind here as well. Moving up to 1440p and here we are uh, at the GPU bottleneck again. 
uh, where both the 6 core CPUs perform about the same and the 4 core CPU is lagging slightly behind. Next game and the last one with 1440p testing is Battlefield 5. I tested in the fully populated server on the Nobik map. The 10400 with the native memory did 157.3 frames per second on average, which is 8% ahead of the 3600 with its native memory. With fast memory, the 10400 only slightly increased its performance, a 3% increase bringing it up to 161.6 frames per second on average, which is not quite enough to match the R5600 with fast memory, but it has to be said that the frame times on the Intel systems does appear to be a bit better. At 1440p we are running into a GPU bottleneck again, so there is not much interesting to see here. Next game is The Elder Scrolls Online, and here the 10400 baseline is 77.8 frames per second on average. The R5600 is 9% ahead with 3200 megahertz memory. With the fast memory, the 10400 gets a 9% performance boost, making it even with the 3600, but when you pair that with fast memory, it takes an 8% lead again. And here the 4 core i5 is delivering similar performance, which is a testament to how single threaded this game is. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is next, and at 1080p the i5-10400 did 135.7 frames per second, making it 12% faster than the R5-600 with 3200 MHz memory. With fast memory the 10400 gets a 4% performance boost, which makes it perform on par with the 3600 with fast memory. Next up is the Division 2. The 10400 baseline here is 149 frames per second average, making it about on par with both the 3600 assaults, which doesn't really seem to benefit from the extra memory bandwidth in this title for some reason. But the 10400 gets a 7% performance bump from the faster memory. Now let's take a look at relative performance at 1080p. We used the 10400 with the 2666 MHz memory as a baseline, and here we can see that it is 2% ahead of the R5600 with the, the 3200 MHz memory. If we give the 3600 some fast memory, it helps it lead the 10400 by 7%, but if we do the same to the 10400, it's now 3% ahead of the 3600. That difference would almost disappear if you play at 1440p, but the exception would be games like Elder Scrolls Online, which is CPU which is CPU bound a lot of the time due to it being very dependent on a few cores. Even at 1440p and 4K with a 5700 XT, you can be CPU bound. Uh, the last test uh, we have is power consumption when running Cinebench R20. And here we have both package power as reported by Hardware Info and power draw from the PSU's 12 volt rail as reported by the Corsair RM1000i power supply. The package power of the Intel CPU is 65 watts, about 20 watts lower than for the R5600. However, the power draw from the PSU's 12 volt rail while running the test is slightly higher for the 10400 on the C490 board than for the R5600 on the X470 board. Now let's take a look at the value. If you only take the CPU cost into consideration and look at the performance with the native memory speed, the i5-10400 is slightly ahead of the R5-3600, but it's a tiny lead and in productivity the 3600 is superior, as you can see in a lot of other reviews. In the end I would say that the 10400 is a good gaming CPU, but when you are pricing out a system I can't help but to feel that you get more for your money with a B450 board and a 3600 than you do with the B460 board and a 10400. The 3600 is faster in multi-threaded workloads and the B450 platform is open to overclocking both CPU and memory, whereas the B460 board uh, for Intel allows for neither. And that's it for now, thank you so much for watching and uh, farewell.